President, thank you very much. And um, I was absolutely amazed, having been here almost a year ago to the day, to travel to Berbera and see not only the port and its expansion, but the 200 kilometers of road that have been set up. And all of that has taken place in the year since we were here last. And so my question to you is that how has your government been able to short circuit and speed up those types of development processes? Because in my country where I come from, a project like that on the road would have been talking about it for 10 years before we even got to it. And then we'd be fighting over who got the contract. And then we'd go to court for another five years. And 20 years later, we maybe would start building the road. And so it has been incredibly and deeply impressive to see the rapid scale in which the decision was made and then the implementation happened. Thank you. Thank you very much. About the Berbera port and the corridor, these projects have came for only two issues brought all that process. That is the trust among the Somali people and all the regions to trust their government and their leadership at any time, whoever he is, whichever party he came from. The main goal of all Somaliland people is to support the institution of the government. Secondly, that's all the Somali landers, wherever he is, a nomad, an intellectual, businessman, traditional leader, women, men, they all believe that the peace is the first priority of their life, just like oxygen. So that has us attracted a lot of governments and institutions to support or to trust to invest their resources in Somalia. Perpera project is an ideal of that two Asian pillars of our life. Peace, trust among the Somali land people so that the United Arab Emirates, our friends, have been the courageous government who have trusted that they can invest over 500 million US dollars to Somaliland corridor and the port of Berbera. And we are expecting, and we are expecting just next month or uh, in the short term that a lot of governments will do the same role. And the first European country who trusted to infest our country was the UK in supporting Berbera and Corridor project. So that's the issue. And South Africa is the, very, is the highest, or how can I say, the, the leading country in Africa, in every field, militarily, economically, and politically. So we are trying to reach them. It's our goal. About our strategy of recognition is that we believe since ever as Somalandris that the recognition is will be achieved internally, not externally. We are not expecting that any government or any institution just they will say we will recognize Somalia. Why for? So we believe that we should clean our home first to show every government and every institution that the people of Somaliland and their government is trustworthy to cooperate and that 
Somaliland as a country geographically is in a strategic, political, military, and economic position in the world. So we are sure that in the near future, a lot of countries will be convinced to recognize Somaliland and we will cooperate. That's our policy to seek for the recognition. Listening to your speech, for not us here, they are in Mogadishu and South Central Somalia <laughs> and have also in the Somali region of Ethiopia. So my question is, have you been able to invite fellow Somalis from these places with much less successful records to see what you are doing in Somaliland and encourage them to learn for the, for the sake of their own countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our youth, our intellectuals, our youth, and traditional leaders, we are all, all the time trying to be a model for all African countries, not the Somalis only, not only the Horn of Africa. Our main vision is to be a role model to most of African countries, politically, economically, culturally, and uh, in, the, in the way, uh, peace of life. Thank you very much. It's very inspiring listening to you. It sounds like a fairy tale. Now, I am wondering, uh, Mr. President, it is typical for uh, African revolutionary or liberational leaders or groups to stay in power for eternity, even when they promise initially to stay in power for a brief interim uh, process. I'll give an example, for example, Mr. President, where I come from in Uganda, the NRM government under General Seveni promised to stay in power for only four years. And since 1986, it has been one president. Now, to see that since 1991, Somaliland has had five presidents, has had a constant peaceful transfer of power from one leader to another. I want to know what is the magic, Mr. President. The day, the day Uganda president entered the capital of Kambala, we were in the bush. It was 1985. We were in a village called Tahor, which is near Awari, in the Somali, uh, 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 Ethiopian Zoo. As the leader is of SL, our principles were first that we are struggling for liberation against the tyrant and we liberating the people to decide their future and to manage their life. Or are we are liberating the people that we should be the leaders and we will be the designers of their future. In every conference in SNM, from the day one, it took one that it was have been declared in London, and all the uh, sub meetings in Mogadishu in Hargeza, the core question was, why are, why are we starting deliberation? Why are we fighting for? So, first decision was, even. In the, struggle, uh, in the struggle time, the leaders and decision makers will be civilians, and the leadership of the struggle will be on a civilian leadership. And as it was that, the only liberation front, which was led by a civilian leadership, all the military officers, including me, we were the commanders of the arm. Second, all we have been experienced, the heroes of Africa, who liberated Africa since 1960. Every leader, they were really heroes to Africa, who started after the, uh, after the Second World War to liberate Africa. Say, Kawama Nakrumah, Mugabe, the last, uh, second two, and so on and so on. Everyone has
have stayed for a long time in the power and the people revolted against them. Why? A leader of a liberation front, when he liberates the country, the country is a dire need economically, culturally, militarily. So he cannot continue in that situation by himself. We need at that time, after the liberation, an experienced intellectuals, civilians, who can lead this situation, the people, to develop. That's why we call it our experienced intellectuals and leaders and civilians at that time. See our leaders. The first president, Abdurrahman Ahmed Ali, he was one of the best academicians in his time, and he was the last ambassador of Ziad Bahrain in Abu Dhabi. A diplomat for 20 years' experience. Then we call it Rigal. He was the first prime minister of Somaliland in 1960, who made and who was the leader of the union in 1960. The second was on uh, Riyadh Kahir. Why we elected him? Because he was the opposite side. He was an intelligent officer in Ziyad Barre, just to make the trust of the people of Somaliland that we share the government, the liberators and those who was with Ziyad Barre. That's how we succeeded in our government. Thank you. Somewhat to the issue of recognition and dialogue. Um, the international community, um, while supportive of Somaliland, continues to insist that Somaliland and Somalia should negotiate their future relations. Now, when that commitment was secured in 2012 in the UK with the entire international community present, the commitment that was made to Somaliland was that negotiations would not prejudice Somaliland's claims to independence. The same conference led to the recognition of a government in Mogadishu and its claims of sovereignty over Somalia. Since then, if I'm not mistaken, there have been nine rounds of talks between Hargeisa and Mogadishu. And as far as I can tell, there has been no progress. Now there's a new government in Mogadishu. An envoy has been named for this dialogue. And again, the pressure will come for another round of talks. I would be grateful for your thoughts about the value of this dialogue and where it is headed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matt. I think the only solution, the only procedure we can solve this problem is through dialogue. Now, the new president of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh, he has the experience of our previous conferences in London, uh, in London, in Accra, and so forth, in Djibouti. And we have the files and the records. Hassan Sheikh, uh, Sharif, Sheikh Sharif, I have not seen official that he has nominated, but I heard, that's through the media. But if it's true, he, is all, he has also the experience. And we are the same. Most of the people who are going to the table are the same people. We met in Ankara, we met in Abu Dhabi, we met in Djibouti. So, he knows our attitude and our decisions, even our words, what we will put on the table. And we know his words and what he will put on the table. So, we will continue the negotiation with two new options. There should be a facilitators, international forum, who can negotiate, who will be the, uh, leading the, uh, the negotiations. It, it should be internationalized. Secondly, we have a problem in Mogadishu and in Hargeisa, both of us. Sheikh Hassan, Farmacho, and so forth, Abdullah Yusuf, when he was elected, he was sworn on his religion, the Muslim, that 
he will pursue the unity of Somalia, including Somalia. That is constitution. And every Somali land president, including me, the previous president, the current president, he will be sworn on the independence of Somalia. That issue is international. Everybody knows. Unless they change their constitution, or unless Somalia changes it, that negotiator will not be a productive. And let me tell you the truth. The people of Somalia, 75% of the population is under 30 years of age. Only 10 or 12% is over 68 in Somalia population. The people of Somalia today and those of in Somalia are the same. They never know and they never understand the unity of Somalia and Somalia. They cannot even be conceptualized. They don't know what it was. So, my, the elders, including me, will soon vanish from the scene of politics. So it's an international responsibility. An international of Somalia and Somalia to face the reality. 30 years of separation, 31 years of separation. A person who was 10 years at that time, he's 41. He's a father, he's a father or a man. You cannot explain him with the show, the administration, the Albar had the unity. You cannot explain it. That's a matter of history, just like a Greek history. So, it's the responsibility of the Somalia leaders in Mogadishu and Somali leaders to face the reality that Mogadishu and Argesa has been separated by nature today. It's impractical to, to negotiate about the unity. That's how we see it. And it's practical. بحبشيل ولا كان قاضي يسبدل كتجنورة شيادة كونا فضضينا يهنان كارل عقد دركتو وحو هدا كوسو كردية إن مركا هادل عقد درايسو أدكو بحين كارتو كار كاقا بانجيقا لمان حروما هادا حبشيل اي قارة دايرو أبكا دا حبشيل وادكلسو تاقي كارتو بلاي ستور يا عبي ستور أيا كوسا هلايا إن ميل كستا او اد جوكتو هادل عقا هاسي فضضو كاد دركتو سيدو كالا ويب سيد كاد حبشيل أيا سي فضضو لحقو كاد حد دركتا قوب كستا ي لعك است او ادرتو و هاو كفكا لعك تو درتي سيكي مجدو دوكيليا ادغي ايد هابي موبيل كيسا غانتا و ها لوغو شو بكرا كونكيسا بانكي غدا هابشيل اما بو هاوكا كادا كرا دما بلا ما هادا هابشيل دونيتا تالا ديدا تا هابشيل هاو فودي ديها جمالي ديد